I'm not just driving the new Lexus LX600. I'm driving the ultra luxury model because you guys are worth it. Luxury vehicles have always been about quiet, sumptuous cabins, making life easier after a tough day on Wall Street, technology that delights, and badges for telegraphing your success or that you've married into money. Nowadays, big, comfortable cars aren't enough, so Lexus offers up the all-new LX600 since the new status symbol is seating high enough to see into the next county and a four-wheel drive system to get you there without roads. This is a body-on-frame SUV, not a crossover. If five lugs are good, six are better. The last time the architecture was changed, George W. Bush was still in the White House executing strategery. In the past, the LX was a very, very nicely trimmed out Toyota Land Cruiser, but those are no longer sold in the United States. So if you want one of these, you will be going to the Lexus store. Prices start at around $90,000, the sweet spot around hundred k This one is the ultra luxury model, which is a little bit over 130 grand. Ultra luxury indeed. It's not just the price tag that'll give buyers pause, it's not practical. Most LXs come with seating for five or seven. Ultra luxury stops the indulgence at four. Children shouldn't sit in the front seat, so it can transport two kiddos max. So really, ultra luxury is best as a limo for the CEO of North Face. This is where the ultra luxury model becomes ultra luxurious. I am the master of my domain here. Both left and right seats are quite adjustable for comfort. Both of them are heated and vented. Let me go to the menu here and now. I am enjoying a light full body refresh massage. It's not as good as those dedicated massage chairs, but hey, who's complaining? Now on this side, I can move the front passenger seat forward so I can stretch out, put my foot on the footrest. What a great way to go to the ski slopes if you have a chauffeur. There are two screens. You can put different programming on each one of them. And if you don't want to bother your seatmate or the driver, there are headphones. It's pretty much all here. I wouldn't say that it's luxuriously spacious back here, but it is nice. There's dimmable lighting and venting that simulates a breezy condition. Want captain's chairs? Well, the four seat ultra luxury is the only way to get them, for now anyway. The outgoing model roamed national parks and mall parking lots with a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter, 383 horse V8. That's been swapped for a twin turbocharged 3.5 liter V6. It pumps out 409 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. The six is more efficient and more powerful, always a win. Four-wheel drive is standard. Multi-train select makes the right setting simple. If owners do point this expensive rig into harm's way, it has all the hardware and electronics to make short work of long, rugged trails, including lockable center differential, and a much improved low-speed crawl control to make off-road cruising more relaxing. There are helpful graphics that offer up all sorts of information for those who can't get enough of that. And there's Wonder Woman mode. <laughs> no, it doesn't make the LX invisible like her jet, but this mode could be useful on tough terrain when placing the wheels. <laughs> Sorry, golden lasso not included. The transmission is a 10 speed, no doubt boosting efficiency. It can be shifted here and here. Standard ground clearance is 7.9 inches. Standard on ultra luxury and optional on luxury and F-Sport models is an active height control hydraulic suspension. It can increase clearance or drop it down for improved aerodynamics. The roads are a little bit damp in dry conditions. This will do zero to 60 in about six and a half seconds. And even with modern traction and electronic stability control, not a wise idea to do something like that in a residential area. The LX moves with authority, as you'd expect. 
Keep in mind, the V6 is actually quicker than the outgoing V8, and it still sounds good. It's way in the distance, but of course it is. This is a Lexus. The architecture uses the same frame construction as the new generation Tundra. That and an aluminum roof and doors means the LX is some 440 pounds lighter than the old one. That has to help drop the center of gravity. The front suspension is a double wishbone setup. The rear is multi-link with improved damper location that gives it more precise wheel travel. With the suspension in normal mode, man, does this thing soak up the bumps. It's extremely comfortable, but when you chuck it hard into a corner, there is going to be some body roll. I've got this in sport mode and it takes care of all of that. It's actually kind of crisp, impressive for a body on frame SUV. This is a large vehicle, but it drives smaller than it is. On narrow streets, uh, yeah, the size is a bit much, but navigating parking lots and garages shouldn't make your palms sweat. LX is about a foot shorter than a standard Cadillac Escalade. Visibility is pretty good, and there's blind spot warning to help out. It's been a while since I've driven the last generation, but the steering is definitely improved. A lot less truck-like, more Lexus-like, um, no micro corrections, and the seating position is better. It's less upright and trucky. Um, I mean, this is a body on frame vehicle, but it is a lot more Lexus-like now. A solid crop of competitors includes Escalade, BMW X7, Lincoln Navigator, Mercedes GLS, and Land Rover Range Rover. And like the Brits, the Lexus will handle severe off-roading without breathing hard. At the 2022 Mudfest SUV of the Year competition, the Lexus sauntered around the course like it was on the way to Whole Foods for organic hummus, even on the extreme off-road section. It hasn't been significantly neutered for glamping duty, and the tires are all season rubber. It says something about its four-wheel drive system that it gets up this loose, sloppy grade. Considering how expensive this vehicle is, I don't really see people off-roading it, so they'll probably be considering something like Escalade, which has the excellent Super Cruise system. Uh, this one has a pretty typical ADAS suite. Um, it's got automatic emergency braking, a very good adaptive cruise control, the lane keeping, eh, it's kind of average. Like most modern vehicles, there's an automatic engine stop-start system. It's Lexus grade, so smooth, I forgot to shoot it when I was driving around. The good news is that the Turbo V6 is five miles per gallon more efficient than the outgoing V8. The bad news is the EPA still rates this at 19 miles per gallon average on premium fuel, but I'm assuming the people that can afford this can afford the gas. Visually, LX600 has the luxury look going on inside. It's a masculine space that telegraphs a I can go anywhere, anytime vibe with top quality materials. Piano black is Yamaha grade, not Mattel. Too bad you can't see the quilting when sitting in the heated and vented seats. Considering this is the ultra luxury, you'd expect them to offer a massage, but that's not a thing. The door handle gets in the way of the driver's window controls. A leather wrap on these would elevate them from Toyota to Lexus grade. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wireless, but there's no Qi charger in front, only in back. And if your definition of ultra luxury means a big sky view, then there's disappointment. But it is fun to watch the 3D camera system scope out your surrounds for tree stumps or paparazzi. The new Lexus interface is a huge improvement over the outgoing system that had that wonky trackpad. This one doesn't really have a home screen per se. It relies heavily on natural voice commands using the wake phrase, hey Lexus, I'm cold. Setting the driver's seat temperature to 72. Hey Lexus, turn on the heated steering wheel. This feature is not available. That's weird, there's a button for it. Uh, generally, this works pretty well. One curveball that I've always thrown SUVs with these kind of systems is this. 
Hey Lexus, I need to buy some camping gear. I'm sorry, I don't know how to do that yet. Say, help me to learn more about what I can do. I didn't expect much. None of them have been able to get me to like REI using that. One thing to keep in mind, once the trial period is over, you do have to subscribe to a data plan for this to work. Welcome to the future. The navigation depends on Google Maps data. It could be an issue in places without cellular service. Getting hands-on with the screen, you'll find it snappy and responsive. Same with the one below that easily toggles between pages. It's all very intuitive. Toyota developed this system in-house and continues to improve it. As for storage, there's the usual amount. Would love to see some lining here and here to keep rattles down. This being the ultra luxury model, I'll hold this to a higher standard. I do like this though. Nice that it's easy for both driver and passenger to get into. In this case, it's a small fridge that keeps things very cold. Nice. Touching on design, LX600 looks pretty much the same, whether it's the base model or the ultra luxury. It's a handsome rig. I understand why people will buy it for styling alone. I like the dip in the hood. The cow catcher spindle grille integrates well with the overall design language. It certainly doesn't look tacked on. You may have noticed there's no Lexus badge in the back. The font makes a strong modern statement. Installing the wiper under the spoiler would clean up the back, always a better look. No powered running boards. Uh, that said, these will never have to be serviced. That super fancy seating setup means that this version of the LX is much less practical than the other models. For starters, this one doesn't have a third row of seating and these seats, well, they don't fold flat. There is a security cover. I'm just kind of shoving it forward. The back row that folds into the floor is in all but this and the base model. Apparently it's roomier now. No bag hooks or straps to keep things from sliding around. There's a lot of space to haul provisions for the billionaires get together in Sun Valley. I'm not fooled that often, but I only brought out a dozen packs, figuring that would be enough. I could easily get another bundle in, probably two. And if you haven't noticed, it's a tailgate that shelters from the rain, a much better setup than side swinging doors. And yes, it's kicked to open. Let's finish this up with red light, green light. Green lights. The new architecture improves the driving dynamics significantly. The LX has lofty off-road chops that'll carry owners anywhere in style and comfort. Fuel economy is improved over the V8, and the styling is strong and handsome without trying too hard. I think the spindle grille works here. Yellow lights. The ultra luxury model is great for those in the second row. Too bad those up front miss out. The new Lexus interface is a huge improvement that will benefit from Toyota's continuous updates. The trimmer size is great for maneuvering around urban areas, but ultimately LX is not as roomy as some competitors. Red light. Fuel economy is improved, but I average 17 miles per gallon. At 130 grand, storage cubbies should be lined and grab handles wrapped. There are odd emissions like massaging seats for those in front, Qi charger for the driver, and no Bluetooth for the rear headphones. Ultimately, the ultra luxury model doesn't quite seem finished. There are better values out there. This is 10 to $15,000 more than similar offerings from Cadillac, Land Rover, Lincoln, and Mercedes. But really, most buyers will probably go with less opulent versions of the LX. Frankly, I don't see very many people buying the ultra luxury model. For starters, it's not as practical. It only seats four. It doesn't have the cargo capacity and it's really expensive, but I can see the appeal of the LX. The seating position is as high as the price tag. I think I can see Montana from here and it's got serious off-road chops. It's the reason why people like Land Rovers. Uh, no, people aren't going to off-road this, but they can if they want to. Always good to know. Few LX600s will have their metal tested, much like Garage Queen Porsche 911s that never hit the track. Buyers want these because, well, they just want them. The LX600 is an improved SUV that makes a statement, even if it isn't quite ultra luxury.
My time with the LX was during a weird weather pattern in the Pacific Northwest. Pretty much four seasons in one day that repeated for five days. At least I missed the ice storm that hit Seattle. That paralyzed every vehicle that wasn't wearing studded winter tires. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Martin Campbell for driving duties. And so you know, this shot is almost kind of an audio check. This is the first thing I do when I'm shooting GoPro stuff. And here's why. Here's the first version of this. Yeah, not so good. Sometimes the mics don't work. Thanks again. No problem. I'll remind you that I have a quote service that will give you instant invoice pricing for the vehicle that you're looking for. It helps to support this channel. <laughs> Gas was not cheap in the LX. Like all of them, it's not perfect, but it will give you a good advantage when shopping for your next car or SUV. I'm always trying to help. A reminder to test drive at least three different vehicles so you know the one that ends up in your driveway is the one that's right for you. Hope you got something out of my look at the Lexus LX 600 Ultra, Ultra. Luxury. 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 Kind of think the echo works there. Before I go, uh, there has been some chatter that people are disappointed that this is no longer sold as the Toyota Land Cruiser, but I knew this has been coming for years. I mean, I remember talking to a Toyota executive probably four or five years ago, and he said that it had become increasingly difficult to move this as a Toyota since it was available as a Lexus for not that much more money. The Land Cruiser was expensive and people wanted the luxury badge. So it's kind of a no brainer. Also, you can still get an ultra capable off-roader in the Forerunner and Sequoia. So there's that. Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, follow me on social media. I'm, I'm going to be on Twitter for as long as it's around. And I'm also on post now. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.